Pingy Pongy Pickup. It was an exciting day on the island of Sodor. It was the opening game for the Sodor United soccer team. All the engines huffed and puffed to be ready on time. Sir Topham Hatt arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. Today is a very busy day. One engine must take the Sodor United team to the soccer field. One engine must take the fans, one must deliver the apples for the halftime break, and the other must collect the dirty washing from Maithwaite Station and take it to the laundry lady. The engines wished happily. Now I must hurry. Thomas, you will decide which engine does which job. Emily was very excited. Soccer is my favorite game. I always puff past the soccer field when the Soto United team is playing. Did you know that the goalkeeper has a lucky pair of gloves? Emily was so busy boasting, she didn't hear her friends. I'll take the team to the soccer field. I'll take the fans. And I'll take the apples for halftime break. Wait a minute. What am I going to do? You can take the dirty washing, Emily. Stinky washing? I know all about the Sodor United team. I wanted the most important job. Delivering the washing isn't the most important job. Emily huffed huffily to a junction. She was cross. I don't want to puff to Maithwaite to collect the stinky washing. Then, Emily saw Percy chuff across the bridge. He was on his way to Farmer McColl's farm to collect the apples. Percy has a very important job. I'm sure I can help him. So, Emily didn't chuff to Maithwaite. She took the track to Farmer McColl's farm instead. Emily huffed her hardest to Farmer McColl's. Percy was being coupled up to the car of apples. Hello, Percy. I'll help you. I'll be your back engine. No, thank you, Emily. I'm fine. But Emily wanted to help. So, Emily buffered up to the other end of the freight car. She began to pull. Fizzling fireboxes! But Percy was pulling the car from the other side. Then there was trouble. Emily pulled so hard that the coupling broke. The apple car tumbled off the tracks. Apples bounced and rolled everywhere. Percy was cross. I don't need your help, Emily. This is my job. Your job is to collect the washing. Emily didn't want to collect the washing. So, she steamed slowly away. I want to help my team win the day. Picking up dirty washing won't help them play. Emily clickety-clacked to a junction. Then, Emily saw James. James had collected the Sodor United fans. James has a very important job. I'm sure I can help him with that. So, Emily pumped her pistons. She had to puff to the junction before James. James, stop! I can help you with your important job. I'll be your back engine. Then the fans will arrive more quickly. But James was going too fast to stop. Out of my way, Emily! But Emily didn't chuff out of the way. James had to screech into a siding. His wheels whirred, and he bumped into the buffers. Luckily, no one was hurt, but James was cross. Thank you, Emily. I don't need your help. This is my job. Your job is to collect the dirty washing. This made Emily cross. She really didn't want to puff the Maithwaite to collect the washing. James steamed snootily away with the passenger cars of fans. I want the most important job. 
I want to help my team win the day. Picking up dirty washing won't help them play. Then, Thomas Puff passed with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas was going to collect the Sodor United soccer team. Thomas has a very important job. I'm sure I can help him with that. Emily pumped her pistons and wished after Thomas. Emily chuffed into the town square. She screeched to a stop. The Sodor United soccer team was waiting. And Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Emily, where are the team's clean soccer shirts and shorts? Emily was puzzled. Then she gasped. Fizzling fireboxes. The stinky washing was the team's soccer shirts and shorts. Emily felt terrible. I didn't take the washing to the laundry lady. Now the team have nothing to wear for the opening game. The game can't take place. And it's all my fault. Emily felt very silly. I thought that all the other jobs were more important than mine. Now I see that all jobs are important. I'm very sorry, sir. I'm very sorry, team. Emily wished weakly. Please, sir, I'll puff my hardest and make sure the team have clean soccer shirts and shorts in time for the opening game. Emily collected the soccer shirts and shorts from Maithwaite Station. Then she huffed and puffed to Marin Station. The laundry lady quickly washed the clothes. These shirts and shorts are soaking wet. They won't be dry in time for the opening game. Emily was very worried. Then, an idea flew into Emily's funnel. Please tie the wet washing to my funnel. The washing can dry in the wind as I race to the town square. Emily chuffed and puffed proudly along the tracks. The wet soccer shirts and shorts flapped and fluttered in the wind. Now, the team will have clean washing for the game. My team will be clean and ready to play. Go Soto United, the best team today! Hooray! Everyone waved to Emily. And Emily tooted back. Emily huffed happily into the town square. She was just in time for the soccer game. Here are your clean, dry soccer shirts and shorts. The Sodor United soccer team cheered and clapped. Emily felt very important. Good luck for the game. Two, four, six, eight. We're the team who won't be late. Sodor United. <laughs> Everyone laughed and laughed. And Emily blew her whistle loudest of all. Diesel's special delivery. It was market day on the island of Sodor. The engines were very busy. Chuffing and puffing. Taking freight cars of fruit and vegetables to market. Diesel wasn't going to market. He had to take slates to the school. The school roof was broken and it was going to rain. The roof needed the slates to be fixed. Diesel clanked through Maithwaite Station. James was there. <laughs> Children were clapping and cheering. James was very proud. I have been clapped and cheered all morning. I have a very special special. Diesel was puzzled. What's so special about your special? <laughs> Then, Diesel saw that James was taking pretty round pink piglets to Farmer Trotter's farm. Aww. I never have pretty pink piglets to deliver. I am never clapped and cheered. 
That's because you are a diesel. <laughs> Special coming through! <laughs> and James whooshed proudly out of the station. Diesel clattered off. He wanted to follow James. He wanted to be clapped and cheered. Then, along the track, Diesel saw Thomas. Thomas was puffing to market. He had a freight car of round, shiny apples. Where are you going with those apples, Thomas? I'm taking them to market. I must hurry. I have a very busy day. Then, Diesel had an idea. Those apples are just as pretty as James's piglets. If I take them, I will be clapped and cheered just like James. So, Diesel oiled next to Thomas. I'm not busy today. I can take your apples to market. Thomas was surprised. Thank you, Diesel. So, Diesel left his slate in a siding. He was coupled up to Thomas's freight car of round, shiny apples and hurried to be cheered and clapped just like James. Diesel found James at Marin Station. Children were on the platform. They were clapping and cheering James and his piglets. Nobody cheered and clapped Diesel and his round, shiny apples. Diesel was upset. I thought my apples were just as pretty as James's piglets. I will find something else that is sure to be cheered and clapped. Diesel clanked and clattered away. Then, Diesel saw Rosie. Rosie was pulling a flatbed of pretty bright flowers. Where are you going with those flowers, Rosie? I'm taking them to market. I must hurry. I'm very busy. Then, Diesel had another idea. Those flowers are as pretty as James's piglets. If I pull those flowers, I will be clapped and cheered, just like James. I'm not busy today, Rosie. I will take your flowers to market for you. Rosie was surprised. Thank you, Diesel. Diesel was coupled up to Rosie's pretty bright flowers. Diesel felt very happy. Soon, Diesel saw James at a crossing. Children were cheering and clapping. Diesel oiled to a stop with his apples and flowers. No one cheered and clapped. Diesel was upset. I thought my apples and flowers were just as pretty as James's pretty pink piglets. But no one is cheering or clapping. James puffed proudly away. Diesel clung crossly to market. Diesel clattered back from market. He passed Farmer Trotter's farm. There was James's wagon of pretty pink piglets. Then, Diesel had a very special idea. If I take James's piglets to the school children, they are sure to clap and cheer. So Diesel buffered up to the piglet's wagon. And he hooted happily away, as fast as his wheels could rattle. Diesel arrived at the school. He saw children standing outside. Rattling rods, they are sure to clap and cheer me now. But the children didn't clap and they didn't cheer. The children were wet and they were worried. Trembling tracks. The children don't want to see pretty pink piglets. 
They want a new roof for their school. Then there was trouble. Sir Topham had arrived on Thomas. He was cross. Diesel, what are you doing with James's piglets? And where is the slate for the school roof? Diesel felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. I have been very silly. I brought the piglets to show the children because I wanted to be clapped and cheered. But now I see that the children don't want pretty pink piglets. They want a new roof for their school. That's right, Diesel. You must put this right. Now. Diesel clattered away. He wanted the children to be happy. Diesel rattled and raced. He had forgotten all about being clapped and cheered. He only wanted to be really useful. I must get back to the school with the slate before it rains again. Diesel arrived at Farmer Trotter's farm. I'm sorry, Farmer Trotter. I took your piglets to show to the children. I wanted to be cheered and clapped like James. But now, I know I should have taken the slate to the school. That was much more important. Farmer Trotter was happy to have his piglets back. And Diesel was happy to hurry to pick up the slate. Soon, Diesel was racing back to the school as fast as his wheels could whir. Diesel wheezed into the school. The children were still waiting. Don't worry, children. Here are the slates for your roof. The children clapped and cheered. Yeah! Hooray for Diesel! Now he won't be wet. Hip, hip! Hooray for Diesel! Hooray for Diesel! Hip, hip! Hooray for Diesel! Hooray for Diesel! Now he won't be wet. Diesel heard the children cheer. He saw them clap. I have never been happier. Thomas and Scruff. On the island of Sodor, all the engines are busy engines. But some have special jobs. Percy pulls the mail cars. Gordon pulls the express. Thomas has his branch line. And Whiff works at the garbage dump. One morning, as Whiff was biffing and bashing garbage cars, Thomas chuffed cheerfully into Whiff's garbage dump. Good morning, Whiff. You look busy. I am, Thomas. I can't stop to talk. I have to puff round the island to pick up more cars. Then I have to shunt them back here, and it must all be tidied away by tea time. Sir Topham Hatt said so. Thomas smiled. He had good news for his friend. Don't worry, Whiff. When you puff back, you will have a helper. His name is Scruff the Scruncher. I'm going to pick him up at Brendam Docks now. Whiff wished with excitement. Are you sure? A helper? For me? That's right, Whiff. Just for you. And Thomas huffed happily away to Brendam Docks. At Brendam Docks, Scruff the Scruncher was waiting for Thomas. Hello, Scruff. I'm Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Scruff was small, square, and very scruffy. Thomas liked Scruff, but he was worried. Really useful engines couldn't be really dirty ones. An idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Before I take you to Whiff's garbage dump, I'm going to bring you a welcome to Sodor surprise. Wait here. Scruff was puzzled. If you say so, Thomas. And Thomas steamed swiftly away. Thomas collected a flatbed full of buckets and brushes, soap suds and sponges. Being clean is being really useful. With will be happy to see Scruff shine and gleam. And Thomas chuffed cheerfully back to Brendam Docks. Thomas whooshed into the docks. Here you are, Scruff. 
you're welcome to Sodor Surprise. With a splosh and a splash, you'll be clean in a dash. Scruff gasped. He'd never seen soap suds. And he'd never seen brushes. They looked very scary. They looked too scary. Uh, bye, Thomas. And with a clickety-clack, Scruff whooshed away down the track and was gone. Thomas was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes. Scruff scared of being clean. I must puff after him as fast as my pistons will pump. Scruff rattled and raced down the track. Thomas puffed and pounded after him. Stop! Scruff! But Scruff didn't stop. He slipped down a siding and disappeared. Thomas huffed to a halt. He peered down the siding. There was no sign of Scruff. Then, Thomas saw a little puff of steam. Scruff had hidden himself behind the bushes. Scruff? Hello? But Scruff didn't answer, and he didn't come out. Just then, Gordon chuffed grandly by with the express. What are you doing, Thomas? Scruff the Scruncher is hiding because he doesn't want to be cleaned. Can you help me? Can you think of something to bring Scruff out of his hiding place? I know. Scruff, it's Gordon here. Would you like to see my express carriages? They're the grandest on the island. Thomas and Gordon waited. But Scruff didn't whoosh. And Scruff didn't wish. He didn't do anything at all. Oh, dear. Thank you, Gordon. I don't think Scruff wants to see your express. Oh, the indignity. Gordon puffed huffily away. Then Henry rolled by. Hello, Thomas. What are you doing? Scruff the Scruncher is hiding because he doesn't want to be cleaned. You're old and wise. Can you think of something to bring Scruff out of his hiding place? I think I have a very good idea. Scruff! Hello! It's Henry, the green engine here. I wonder whether you might like to come with me to get my special coal. Thomas and Henry waited. But Scruff didn't whoosh, and Scruff didn't wish. He didn't do anything at all. Bust my buffers. Thank you, Henry. I don't think Scruff wants to see your special coal. What a shame. Maybe another day. And Henry steamed sweetly away. Next, Percy puffed perkily by. Hello, Thomas. What are you doing? Scruff the Scruncher is hiding because he doesn't want to be cleaned. Can you help me? Can you think of something to bring Scruff out of his hiding place? I know. Hello, Scruff. I'm Percy. I pull the mail cars. They're red and they're wooden. And they're full of very exciting parcels. Would you like to come with me? Thomas and Percy waited. But Scruff didn't whoosh. And Scruff didn't wish. He didn't do anything at all. Flatten my funnel, Percy. What am I going to do? I don't know, Thomas. But I have to go. I'm late with the mail. Just then, Whiff whirred down the track, pulling a long train of garbage cars. He smiled when he saw Thomas. Hello, Thomas. I'm really looking forward to having Scruff to help me. He'll enjoy biffing and bashing all this garbage. And Whiff wobbled away. Thomas felt terrible. Cinders and ashes. I promised Whiff a helper. Now I've scared him away. All because I thought that to be really useful, he had to be really clean. And all Scruff really wants to do is scrunch garbage. Suddenly, an idea popped into Thomas's pistons. Of course. I know what to do. Thomas's axles tingled and tinkled. Scruff, 
There are lots of garbage cars waiting for you to scrunch. Would you like me to show you them? Suddenly, Scruff whooshed out of hiding and onto the track. Scruff was ready and raring to go. First, Thomas and Scruff picked up garbage at the Sodor Steamworks. Next, they rattled to Knapford Station for another garbage car. And then, Thomas and Scruff steamed to the quarry. At last, Thomas and Scruff rattled into Whiff's garbage dump. Well done, Scruff! Then, Whiff weeshed in. Trembling tracks! You must be Scruff! And look how really useful you are already! Scruff was scruffier, but happier than ever. Pleased to be here, Whiff. Let's get scrunching! So Whiff and Scruff biffed and bashed. They crashed and smashed. And Thomas <laughs> laughed until his wheels wobbled. <laughs> Merry Winter Wish. It was the winter holidays on the island of Sodor. All the engines were excited. That evening, Knapford Station was going to be decorated with lots of winter lights. There were to be red lights, green lights, sparkling lights, and even snowflake lights. Thomas chuffed into Brendam Docks. All the engines were huffing and puffing busily. Salty rolled over. He had some important news. The engines liked important news. A ship will arrive from the mainland. It'll deliver a special winter holiday light for Knapford Station. It will be the biggest light of all. The engines wished with wonder. What's the light called? It is called the Star of Knapford. It's a very special star. If an engine passes by it, they can make a wish. Then maybe, just maybe, their wish will come true. The engines were very excited. They couldn't wait to see the Star of Knapford. Just then, Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, you must wait here. You will have a special to deliver. Yes, sir. Thomas's axles tingled and trembled. A special was best of all. Thomas watched and waited. Then, his special arrived. Shiver me timbers, Thomas. Look at that. Cranky lowered the star of Knapford gently onto a flatbed. The star sparked and sparkled. It looked wonderful. Thomas, you will pull the star of Knapford to Knapford Station. Thomas was excited. He thought his pistons would pop. Bubbling boilers! I can't wait to tell my friends about my special. So Thomas buffered up to the star of Knapford. Then he chuffed cheerfully off to Knapford Station. Thomas puffed proudly to a junction. The star of Knapford shimmered on his flatbed. Then Thomas saw Percy chuff across the bridge above. An idea popped in Thomas's pistons. I'm sure Percy would like to make a wish. Then maybe, just maybe, Percy's wish will come true, just like Salty said. So Thomas didn't take the track to Knapford Station. He puffed quickly to follow Percy. At last, Thomas was side by side with Percy. Percy, Percy, I have the star of Knapford on my flatbed. Percy was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes! Are you taking the star to Knapford Station? Yes, Percy. After you have made a wish. So Thomas pulled the star alongside Percy. Percy looked at the star. Then he closed his eyes tight. I made a wish. Thank you, Thomas. That made Thomas very happy. Now I must hurry. 
Next, Thomas saw Henry chuffing cheerfully. I'm sure Henry would like to make a wish. So Thomas wished and whistled away to follow Henry. Thomas raced after Henry, all the way to Tidmiss Sheds. Henry saw the star of Knapford on Thomas's flatbed. His boiler bubbled brightly. Oh, Thomas, you're lucky. Are you taking the star to Knapford? Yes, Henry, after you have made a wish. So Henry closed his eyes. I made my wish. Thank you, Thomas. That made Thomas even more happy. Hooray! I hope all my friends' wishes will come true. Thomas chuffed on to Knapford Station. James puffed quickly past. I'm sure James would like to make a wish. So Thomas raced after James. Thomas chased James all the way up Gordon's Hill. Then there was trouble. Thomas rattled and raced down the hill. Stop, James! Thomas's flatbed jiggled and joggled. The star of Natford wiggled and wobbled. Thomas was worried. Cinders and ashes, this is fast! Thomas applied his brakes. His wheels squawked and squeaked. Sparks flickered and flashed. At last, Thomas screeched to a stop. The star of Knapford flew high into the sky. It floated and flickered right over James and Henry and Percy. Then crashed with a crunch and a crack onto the track in front of Thomas. Thomas gasped. The star is broken. Now my friend's wishes might not come true. And it's all my fault. Thomas was upset. How can I get the star to Knapford now? Sir Topham Hatt and the other engines will be waiting. Thomas decided to make a wish. Maybe, just maybe, my wish will come true. Thomas closed his eyes. I wish that one of my friends would come to help me. Suddenly, Percy, Henry, and James whooshed towards him. Thomas's wheels wobbled with wonder. We saw the star of Knapford fly high in the sky. Are you all right, Thomas? Thomas looked at his friends. Then he looked at the broken star. I have been a very silly engine. I wanted you all to make wishes, so I didn't go straight to Knapford. I puffed too far and too fast. Please, will you help me? Thomas's friends were happy to help. Percy watched the star. Henry fetched workmen to fix it. And Thomas and James found Rocky. They huffed him quickly to the star. Soon, the workmen had fixed the star. Rocky lifted it carefully back onto Thomas's flatbed. Thank you all. Now we must hurry to Knapford. So, together, the engines wished and they whooshed across Soto. They arrived just in time. Everyone watched as Rocky put the star of Mapford high above the station. Then they clapped and cheered as the star was switched on. It shimmered and shone brightest of all. Thank you, Percy, Henry, Rocky, and James. I'm very lucky to have you all as friends. I'm sorry that your wishes didn't come true. Mine did. I wished that we'd all be together under the star of Knapford. So did I. So did I. Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. His friend's wishes had come true. And that made Thomas happiest of all. 
Thomas's tall friend. The island of Sodor has many wonderful places to visit. Today was a special day. A new animal park was to be opened on Sodor. There were wide open spaces for the animals to live in. All the engines were very excited. Thomas puffed into Brendam docks. He beamed from buffer to buffer. Good morning, Percy. Good morning, Thomas. Look at my special leaves to feed the animals. I have rosy red apples for the animals. And I am to take the mayor and Sir Topham Hatt to open the park. Do you have a special, Thomas? I am to take the tallest animal on Sodor up to the animal park. Percy and Edward gasped. What is it, Thomas? It's a giraffe. All the engines wished with wonder. They had never seen a giraffe before. Fizzling fireboxes, Mr. Giraffe. You are very tall. Edward, Gordon, and Percy were puzzled. Will he blow over? Why is he so spotty? Does he sit down? Of course he'll sit down. You must wait for the giraffe keeper. The giraffe will do what his keeper tells him. But Thomas didn't want to wait for the giraffe keeper. He wanted to show the children the tallest animal on Sodor. Don't worry, Cranky. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. And Thomas puffed proudly out of the docks. Thomas and the giraffe puffed happily along. Children waved and whooped, and Thomas's firebox fizzed with excitement. Thomas slowed as he puffed to a low bridge. Sit down, Mr. Giraffe. The giraffe didn't want to sit down. He wanted to see the sights of Sodor. Thomas wished. Then he heard a familiar whistle. It was Gordon. He was taking the mayor and Sir Topham Hatt to the animal park. Out of the way! Express coming through! I can't go under the bridge with Mr. Giraffe. This made Gordon grumpy. You must go back to the docks for the keeper. The giraffe will do what the keeper tells him. No, thank you, Gordon. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him. So Gordon huffed huffily away. But Thomas didn't know how to make the giraffe sit down. Thomas saw some cows. They munched merrily, then lay lazily in the sun. Edward chuffed up. An idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Edward, can Mr. Giraffe eat some of your apples? Why, Thomas? Because then he will feel sleepy and lie down. Edward was puzzled, but he wanted to help his friend Thomas. Thank you, Edward. The giraffe liked Edward's rosy red apples. He liked them so much, he ate and ate and ate. And he didn't sit down. Edward was upset. Bubbling boilers! You must go back to the docks for the keeper. The giraffe will do what the keeper tells him. No, thank you, Edward. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will do what I tell him.
But Thomas was worried. Sir Topham Hatt and the mayor would be waiting at the animal park. Then, Percy puffed past. Hello, Thomas. What's the matter? Mr. Giraffe won't sit down. <gasps> Can he eat some of your leaves? Then he's sure to want to lie down and sleep. Percy was happy to help his best friend, Thomas. The giraffe liked Percy's leaves. He thought they were a wonderful game. Leaves flittered and floated through the air until there were none left at all. Cinders and ashes. I only wanted you to sit down, Mr. Giraffe. Suddenly, the giraffe did sit down and he closed his eyes. Mr. Giraffe's asleep, Percy. We must steam straight to the animal park. So, Thomas and Percy clickety-clacked along the track and under the bridge to the animal park. Then there was trouble. The mayor and Sir Topham Hatt were cross. They had waited a long time for the tallest animal on Sodor. But the tallest animal on Sodor was fast asleep. Wake up, Mr. Giraffe, please! But the giraffe slept on. This is a disaster, Thomas. Thomas felt terrible. There were no rosy red apples, no juicy leaves, and no wide awake Mr. Giraffe. I know, sir. It is a disaster. I should have waited for the giraffe keeper. I was silly to think Mr. Giraffe would do what I told him. I'll puff my hardest to the docks and bring the keeper here. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away. The giraffe keeper was at the docks. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, sir. All aboard! The giraffe was still asleep when Thomas puffed into the animal park. I'm sure Mr. Giraffe will wake up now you're here, sir. And then Thomas chuffed away. He had a lot to do. At Farmer McCall's farm, Thomas picked up more rosy red apples. And from the orchard, more juicy leaves. At last, Thomas puffed and shoved and huffed back to the animal park. Everyone was cheering and clapping Sodor's tallest animal. Mr. Giraffe, you're awake! The giraffe heard Thomas's toot. He stretched his long neck up, 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 and then down to Thomas's face. Welcome to Sodor, Mr. Giraffe. Victor says yes. On the island of Sodor, the engines like to puff and huff their hardest. Sometimes they huff too hard. Their pistons pop. Their traction rods rattle. And then they must go to the steamworks to be fixed. Victor liked fixing engines, and he liked being busy. And today was a very busy day at the steamworks. Cars and engines were everywhere. Hurry up with those valves. We don't have all day, you know. Percy was waiting to be painted. I'd like to be gleaming and green, please, Victor and Edward had to be fixed. My broken boiler is bothering me, Victor. Victor clickety-clacked along the tracks from one engine to another. I know, I know, my friends. You all need to be fixed, and you all want to be fixed right away. But I only have one set of wheels, you know. Then Sir Topham Hatt arrived on Gordon. Gordon spluttered and stuttered as he steamed. 
Victor, Gordon's valves are blocked. They must be cleaned as soon as possible. The children are going on a boat trip. Gordon must be ready to take them to the docks at tea time. Victor was worried. There was no room for Gordon in the steamworks. And the workmen were all busy. But Victor didn't want to upset Sir Topham Hatt. Of course, sir. I will have Gordon puffing perfectly in no time. That made Sir Topham Hatt very happy. Well done, Victor. I'm pleased to see that you are a really useful engine. Really useful engines do their best, and they are the best. Thank you, sir. Thomas chuffed cheerfully up to his friend. Oh my, Victor. Sir Topham Hatt is very pleased with you. Victor puffed with pride. Thank you, Thomas, my friend. Now, what can I do for you? I have a loose foot plate. Victor knew he had too much to do. He knew he didn't have time to fix Thomas's foot plate, but he wanted to be the best. He wanted to be a really useful engine. Come on in, my friend. I'll fix your foot plate. Gordon, chuff back to let Thomas in. Come on, move over everyone, please. What about my blocks valves? And my broken boiler. And my gleaming green paint. And our valves. We were here first. Sorry, boss. The slip of the hook. Victor huffed and heaved. All in good time, my friends. Fix Thomas's footplate, please. Then, Emily steamed in. She had to collect an important visitor from Brendam Docks. Emily, my friend. Hello. What can I do for you? My buffers need a perfect polish. Victor knew he had too much to do. He knew he didn't have time to polish Emily's buffers. But he wanted to be the best. He wanted to be a really useful engine. Come along in, Emily, my friend. I will have your buffers polished perfectly. Emily wheezed and squeezed in front of Gordon. What about my blocked valves? My broken boiler. My gleaming green paint. My foot plate. Our valves. We were here first. <laughs> Sorry, boss. Slip of the hook. Fizzling fireboxes. Give Emily some room. Puff back. Puff back, please. What about my blocked valves? Then there was trouble. Black smoke and soot shot from Gordon's valves all over Sir Topham Hatt, who had just arrived in his bright blue car. Suddenly, Sir Topham Hatt's car wasn't bright blue anymore. It was black and sooty. Victor gasped. Fizzling fireboxes. Oh, the indignity. Heaving hooks. Was that meant to happen, boss? No, it was not. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. What are you doing, Victor? My car is ruined, and Gordon isn't fixed and ready to take the children to the docks. I thought you were really useful. Victor felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. This is a disaster, and it's all my fault. I wanted to show you that I really am the best, that I am really useful. So I tried to do everything, and I ended up doing nothing. Can I help, boss? No, thank you, Kevin. Now I must do something. Victor steams sadly to Sir Topham Hatt. Sir, if you will let me, I can have Gordon ready in time. Your car will be bright blue again, all the engines will be fixed, and I will be really useful again. Sir Topham Hatt could see Victor was sorry. Very well, Victor, but you'd better hurry. Victor smiled. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. 
Please, my friends. I have been silly. Now I ask you to help me. I can fix all of you, but I cannot fix all of you at the same time. Some of you will have to wait. The engines hooted and tooted. We'll all help you, Victor. Standing by, boss. Victor smiled at his friends. Thank you. First of all, Gordon's valves must be cleaned. What about my buffers? Emily, my friend, your buffers are going to be beautiful for your visitor. Tomorrow, I will have them polished perfectly, but not today. What about my broken boiler? Victor smiled kindly at Edward. Your boiler will be bubbling soon. Please wait. Then Percy puffed out. I really want to be gleaming green. Victor chuckled. I know you do, Percy. And you will be the greenest green there is. But maybe not today. Wait, please, with your friend Edward. Harry and Bert creaked crossly. We were here first! I know you were, my friends. I have not forgotten you. After Gordon, it will be your turn. This made Harry and Bert very happy. Then, Victor chuffed to Thomas. And your footplate, Thomas, my friend. I was silly to say I could fix it today. Don't worry, Victor. I can easily come back tomorrow. Thank you, Thomas. Kevin trundled up. Good work, boss. Later, Victor looked happily around the steamworks. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Sir, Gordon's valves are cleaned and his funnel is steaming. Well done, Victor. I see you are once more a really useful engine. That made Victor very happy. Thank you, sir. Boss, do you think I'm really useful? Victor smiled. Yes, you are, my friend. We are really useful together. <laughs> <laughs> Pop goes Thomas. It was summer on the island of Sodor. Engines puffed and chuffed happily in the sunshine. The children were excited. Today was their summer picnic in the Whispering Woods. Thomas was excited too. He had a very special special. This is the lemonade for the school picnic, Thomas. You must take it to Whispering Woods Halt. Yes, sir. Thomas had never carried lemonade before. He puffed proudly out of Knapford Station. On the way, Thomas went over some bumpy track. Dizzling fireboxes! Rattle, rattle, shake, shake, went the lemonade in Thomas's freight car. And then, pop, went one of the corks. Thomas couldn't see what had made the popping sound. <laughs> Bust my buffers! That noise was very funny. Thomas stopped at a junction. The Whispering Woods halt is straight ahead. But if I take the left track, it's bumpier. Maybe then I'll hear the funny popping noise again. I'd like that. So Thomas took the left track. The track was very bumpy. Whoa! If I bounce along the track, perhaps that sound will soon come back. The sound that makes me smile and giggle when I puff on tracks that jiggle. Rattle, rattle, shake, shake, wobble the lemonade. Pop, 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 burst the corks. <laughs> that sound makes me very happy. Then Thomas saw Mr. Bubbles the clown. He was going to the school picnic too. Hello, Mr. Bubbles. Isn't this the funniest noise you've heard? 
A popping cork hit Mr. Bubbles. It knocked his big red nose off. But Thomas didn't know he'd knocked off Mr. Bubbles' red nose. He was too busy thinking about the next bit of bumpy track. That was fun. I know where there is some even bumpier track ahead. That means more funny popping. This track was very bumpy indeed. <laughs> if I bounce along the track, perhaps that sound will soon come back. The sound that makes me smile and giggle when I puff on tracks that jiggle. Rattle, rattle, shake, shake, wobble the lemonade. Pop, 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 ping the corks right into a field of pigs. The pigs were surprised as corks dropped and plopped into the mud around them. <laughs> what a jolly noise! Then Thomas saw some bakers. They were waiting outside the bakery. They were waiting for Emily. Emily was coming to pick up the cakes for the picnic. Isn't this the funniest noise you've heard? Popping corks hit the bakers oh. and the cakes. Oh. All the cakes were spoiled. But Thomas still didn't notice. He was too busy thinking about the next bit of bumpy track. If I take this track, it will be the bumpiest track on the whole of Sodor. If I bounce along the track, perhaps that sound will soon come back. The sound that makes me smile and giggle when I puff on tracks that jiggle. <laughs> Rattle, rattle, shake, shake, jiggle the lemonade. Pop, 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 pop the corks. Then Thomas saw James. James was taking the children to the picnic. Hello, James. Isn't this noise the funniest noise you've heard? But James didn't think it was funny at all when a cork bounced off his shiny red paint. Flatten my funnel! What was that? Then there was trouble. The popping corks hit the signalman. He was so surprised, he pulled the wrong lever. The tracks changed. James was sent into a siding. James bumped the buffers. Luckily, no one was hurt. But still, Thomas didn't notice. He was having a wonderful time. At last, Thomas arrived at Whispering Woods Halt. Sir Topham Hatt wasn't happy. Thomas, you have caused confusion and delay. Mr. Bubbles has lost his nose. Now he will be late. When Emily arrived to pick up the cakes, they were spoiled. James has bumped the buffers, and the bottles in your freight car have lost their corks. The lemonade is all gone. Suddenly, the very last cork popped and knocked Sir Topham Hatt's hat right off his head. Sir Topham Hatt was surprised. Thomas gasped. Cinders and ashes? The funny popping sound that made me laugh? Must have been the corks. This is all my fault, sir. Thomas felt terrible. Now the children couldn't have their picnic. I could put this right, sir. Thomas pumped his pistons and chuffed quickly away. First, Thomas puffed to the bakery. The bakers had baked more cakes, and they were loaded onto Thomas's freight cars. Then, Thomas chuffed an Atford for more lemonade. He saw Mr. Bubbles. Mr. Bubbles had bought a new red nose. I'm sorry about your nose, sir and I'm sorry I made you late. Now, may I take you to the picnic? That's a splendid idea, Thomas. 
Soon, Thomas was steaming back to Whispering Woods Halt. On the way, Thomas told Mr. Bubbles all about the popping corks. They made a very funny sound. It made me laugh. It, it made me happy. Soon, Thomas, you will hear a sound that makes you feel even happier. Thomas was puzzled. This time at the junction, Thomas took the flat track straight to Whispering Woods Hall. Thomas arrived at Whispering Woods Hall just in time. Not one of the corks had popped. The children saw Thomas had brought Mr. Bubbles and the cakes. Thomas listened to the children laughing and cheering. Now, Thomas, that is the happiest sound of all. You're right, Mr. Bubbles. And Thomas <laughs> laughed loudest of all. <laughs> Thomas in charge. It was a beautiful morning on the island of Sogo. All the ancients were busy. Thomas was pleased. He was puffing to Brendam docks to shunt coal cars. Thomas chuffed cheerfully into the docks. Gordon was waiting with the express. Good morning, Gordon. Good morning, Thomas. I'm going to shunt these coal cars faster than fast. Gordon was happy he didn't have to shunt coal cars. I'm waiting for Sir Topham Hatt. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt arrived. Today is an important day. I am to meet the railroad inspector at Knapford Station. Then I will take him on a tour of the island. Our tour will end here at the docks. Thomas's boiler bubbled. The railroad inspector was a very important visitor. Thomas, I want you to be busy shunting cars when the inspector visits. Busy engines will please him most of all. Thomas's firebox fizzed with excitement. Bubbling boilers. I must make sure I shunt busier than ever. Thomas puffed over to the cars. Shunting cars, I do the best. I biff and bash and never rest. Suddenly, Thomas stopped. An idea flew into his funnel. Sir Topham Hatt said, busy engines will please the railroad inspector most of all. I must find more engines to shunt cars. Then the railroad inspector will be really pleased, and Sir Topham Hatt will be really proud. So Thomas left the coal cars, and he huffed happily out of the docks. Thomas puffed into Marin Station. Percy was there. He was waiting for his mail cars to be loaded. Good morning, Percy. I have some important news. The railroad inspector is coming to Brendam Docks. Sir Topham Hatt said it will make the inspector very pleased to see busy engines shunting there. Will you come? Percy was worried. I can't, Thomas. I have to deliver the mail. But shunting cars will please the inspector most of all and make Sir Topham Hatt proud. Percy wished and whooshed. All right, Thomas. I'll come with you. So Percy was uncoupled from his mail cars, and he puffed away with Thomas, just as the railroad inspector arrived with Sir Topham Hatt. They had come to see Percy busy with his mail cars, but the station was very quiet, and Percy was nowhere to be seen. Thomas and Percy didn't know this. They huffed happily into the quarry. Then they saw Mavis. Hello, Hello Mavis. Mavis. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Percy. You look busy. Suddenly, another idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I can ask Mavis to come and help us shunt at the docks. I'm sure she'd like to do that. Puff on, Percy. I'll ask Mavis. So Percy steamed on to the docks, and Thomas clattered back into the quarry and up to Mavis. Mavis. 
I have some very important news. The railroad inspector is coming to Brendam Docks. Sir Topham Hatt said it will make the inspector very pleased to see busy engines shunting there. Will you come? Mavis wasn't sure. I don't think I can, Thomas. I have a lot to do here. Shunting cars will please the inspector most of all. And make Sir Topham Hatt proud. Mavis wanted to make Sir Topham Hatt proud. All right, Thomas. I'll come with you. So Mavis left her slate cars and clattered away with Thomas. Just as Sir Topham Hatt and the railroad inspector arrived. They had come to see Mavis busy at work in the quarry. But the quarry wasn't busy. It was very, very quiet. The railroad inspector sighed. And Sir Topham Hatt couldn't believe his eyes. Thomas puffed back to the docks. Percy and Mavis were there. They had shunted a long line of cars. Thomas was pleased. Then he heard Gordon. Gordon is bringing Sir Topham Hatt and the railroad inspector. Quick, Percy, hurry, Mavis. We must be as busy as bees. The railroad inspector must be pleased, and Sir Topham Hatt must be proud. Then there was trouble. Percy shoved. Mavis shunted, and Thomas shouted. One, two, three, push! The coal cars bashed and biffed together. They juddered and jumped. Coal dust scattered and splattered everywhere. It covered the railroad inspector and Sir Topham Hatt. Then it flew down Gordon's funnel. Gordon spluttered and stuttered. Oh, the indignity. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Thomas, what have you done? Thomas felt terrible. The railroad inspector isn't pleased. Sir Topham Hatt isn't proud. Gordon can't whoosh at all. And it's all my fault. Thomas knew he had to chuff and puff to put things right. Sir? I will shunt Gordon to the steamworks. Victor will make sure his funnel is free and his firebox fizzes. Then, Gordon can take you on the tour of Sodor, and I can be really useful. Sir Topham Hatt was happy to hear this. Very well, Thomas. So Thomas heaved and hauled his hardest and shunted Gordon glumly away from the docks. At the steamworks, Victor was happy to welcome Gordon and Thomas. Well, Thomas, my friend, what have we here? Gordon grumped and groaned. Gordon's funnel is blocked with coal dust. He needs a clear funnel and a fizzing firebox. Then he has come to the right place. Gordon, please stop looking so unhappy. It's only your funnel we must fix, not your pistons that won't pump. Soon, Gordon's funnel was fixed. His firebox was fiery, and he was ready and raring to take Sir Topham Hatt and the railroad inspector on a tour of the island, and of all the really useful and very busy engines on Sodor. Thomas steamed swiftly back to the docks. He knew he had a lot of work to do. At the docks, Thomas started to shunt and shove. He huffed his hardest. Shunting cars, I do the best. I biff and bash and never rest. And he didn't see Sir Topham Hatt and the railroad inspector arrive. They watched Thomas. Thomas, you are a really useful engine. I am very proud of you. And I am very pleased to see such a busy engine. I wasn't sure, but now I know Sir Topham Hatt's railroad is the best. Thomas beamed and gleamed. Sir Topham Hatt smiled and smiled with pride. Silly me, I was so wrong. I can shunt the whole day long. Never stop and never rest. A busy engine is the best. 
being Percy. It was a sunny day on the island of Sodor. The engines were huffing and chuffing as they clickety-clacked along the tracks to Brendam Docks. The docks were busy. Cranky was creaky with crates, and Salty was shunting as Percy puffed in to collect the mail cars. Excuse me, Thomas. I excuse me, James. I must collect my cars on time. Thomas and James didn't move out of Percy's way. Percy tried again. Excuse me. If I'm late with my mail, I won't be a really useful engine. Just then, Gordon thundered into the docks. Out of my way! Express coming through! Salty moved out of Gordon's way. Percy saw this. I wish I was as loud as Gordon. Then everyone would chuff out of my way. Gordon collected his passengers. Then he huffed grandly away. Out of my way! Express coming through! This made an idea fly into Percy's funnel. I shall be as loud as Gordon. Then the other engines are sure to take notice of me. So Percy pumped his pistons and peeped as loudly as he could. Out of my way! Mail coming through! Thomas and James were surprised. Cinders and ashes! Flatten my funnel! It's Percy! And the two engines steamed swiftly out of Percy's way. Being loud made Percy feel very important. Percy liked feeling important. Now I shall be like Gordon. And Percy puffed proudly away. Percy clickety-clacked cheerfully. I like being Gordon. It makes me feel bold. I'll do what I want to, not what I'm told. Then Percy saw Toby on the track ahead. Toby was steaming slowly. Percy had to steam slowly, too. Percy didn't want to steam slowly. So, an idea popped into his pistons. Out of my way! Mail coming through! Toby was so surprised, he juddered and shuddered to a stop. But he didn't puff out of Percy's way. Hello, Percy. Percy was disappointed. Then, Percy saw Gordon clatter past on the express line. Out of my way! Express coming through! Fizzling fireboxes! Gordon is fast. I shall be fast! So at the next junction, Percy switched tracks. Now, he was on the express line. And with a whoosh and a whoosh, Percy whistled away like the wind. And like Gordon, Percy felt important. I like being Gordon. It makes me feel bold. I'll do what I want to, not what I'm told. Percy was going so fast on the express line, he raced straight through Maithwaite Station. Out of my way! Mail coming through! And left the mail sacks behind. Percy felt happy. He was fast. He was loud. I like being Gordon. It makes me feel bold. I'll do what I want to, not what I'm told. At Marin Station, Percy saw Alicia Botti on the platform. She was going to have dinner with Sir Topham Hatt. Hello, Percy. I'm waiting for Gordon to take me to Knapford. Percy felt loud. Percy felt fast. Percy felt he was just as good as Gordon. He could take very important passengers, too. Step inside my cab, Miss Botty. I will take you there in no time. 
and Percy whooshed away with Alicia Botti to Knapford Station. Percy felt proud. He was fast, he was loud, and he had a very important passenger. I like being Gordon. It makes me feel bold. I'll do what I want to, not what I'm told. And Percy raced and rattled right past Sir Topham Hatt. Then there was trouble. Gordon was roaring towards Percy. Out of my way! Express coming through! Out of my way! Mail coming through! But Gordon didn't get out of Percy's way. Suddenly, Percy was worried. Oh my! Oh no! Oh help! Whoa! Whoa! Gordon swerved and swayed into a side. He bashed the buffers and toppled off the tracks. Percy felt terrible. Now, he didn't feel bold at all. He felt very silly. I'm sorry, Gordon. I wanted to be you. I wanted to be fast and loud and very important. But now you can't puff at all. And it's all my fault. Gordon grumped. Mm. Percy puffed. I will put all of this right by just being Percy. Mm. First, Percy took Alicia Botti to Sir Topham Hatt at Knapford. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, Miss Botti. I was trying to be Gordon, but I know that I'm only Percy. Next, he puffed into the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Excuse me, James. I made Gordon derail. Would you pull Rocky with me to help Gordon? I'm not strong enough alone. James sniffed. Then, he felt sorry for Percy. Very well. Buffer up. And together, they heaved and hauled Rocky to help Gordon. Thank you, James. Thank you, Rocky. I must hurry now to pick up the mail. And Percy huffed and chuffed to pick up the mail sacks. Slowly, Percy steamed away to Knapford. I'm really just Percy. I'm small and I'm green. I'm silly, I'm slow. I don't want to be seen. Percy chuffed into Knapford. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. Percy's firebox fizzed with fear. Percy, why did you want to be Gordon? You're perfect being Percy, and that's what I want you to be. All the engines hooted and tooted in agreement, and Percy smiled. He was happy being Percy. Henry's Magic Box. The winter holidays are a very special time on Sodor. There are twinkling lights and snowy nights, and there are lots of surprises of all sorts and sizes. One morning, Henry was alone at Tidmouth Sheds. All the other engines were busy. Henry didn't want to be alone. He wanted to be busy like the other engines. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Henry was happy to see him. Good morning, sir. Henry, I have a very special special for you. Henry gasped. This was more than he could ever have dreamed of. Yes, sir. Ready to be really useful, sir. Henry, you must pick up a very special box from Brendam Docks. Next, you must take the box to Farmer McCall's field. Then, you must go and tell all the other engines to come to Farmer McCall's field at tea time. It's important, Henry, that you take great care of the box. 
I want to be proud of you. Henry Weistein. He was excited to have such an important job. Of course, sir. I will take the best care of the box. Then Sir Topham had left. Henry pumped his pistons and puffed proudly to Brendam Docks. Henry chuffed into Brendam Docks. This box is special, Henry. You have to take special care of it. I know, Cranky. That's why Sir Topham Hatt chose me for the job. And Henry chuffed cheerfully away to Farmer McColl's. Henry huffed in with his very special special. Please be careful with the box. Henry was worried for his box. It stood all alone. But he had to go and tell the other engines to come to the field at tea time. I must hurry. Henry huffed along. He saw Gordon ahead at the junction. But Henry didn't puff on to tell Gordon to be at the field at tea time. Henry was worried about his box alone in the field. First, I must go and check that my special box is safe. So, Henry hurried back to the field. Henry heaved to a stop. Then, he gasped. Now, there were five Christmas trees in the field, but no box. Fizzling fire boxes! Sir Topham Hatt won't be proud of me now. He will be cross. I must find the box. Henry steamed swiftly away. Then, Henry met Toby and James at a junction. Henry was too busy looking for the box to notice them. Hello, Henry. You look wobbly with worry. But Henry wasn't listening. He didn't tell Toby and James to be at the field at tea time. There was no box to see. Henry had to find it. Henry huffed hurriedly back to the field. Then his pistons almost popped. Bust my buffers! Now there are even more Christmas trees, but my very special box is still gone. I must find it. Henry juddered and jittered to the junction. Hello, Henry. Emily told us Sir Topham Hatt has given you a very special special. Henry gulped and gasped. He didn't tell Thomas and Percy to be at the field at tea time. There was no box for them to see. I must hurry. And Henry raced away. Henry looked everywhere for his box. In fields and fenlands, sidings and stations. He couldn't find the box anywhere. Henry steamed sadly back to the field. Then he gasped. The empty field is now a forest of Christmas trees, and my special box still isn't here. Henry, I asked you to do a special job. You haven't done it. It's almost tea time, and the other engines aren't here. Henry wished weakly. His firebox flickered. I'm sorry, sir. I've let you down. I haven't looked after the very special box. It has disappeared. I haven't told any of the engines to be here. And you won't be proud of me. Sir Topham Hatt sighed. Henry, you are an old and kind engine. But you worry too much. Where do you think the forest came from? Henry we steam and bubbled his boiler. He really wanted to find the answer. He didn't want Sir Topham Hatt to think he was silly. Then the answer flew into his funnel. The trees were in the box, sir. That's why the box isn't here, and the Christmas trees are. That's right, Henry. You looked after the box very well. Now, go and do the rest of your job. 
Henry smiled from buffer to buffer. Yes, sir. We'll all be here at tea time. And Henry pumped his pistons and chuffed cheerfully away. First, Henry found Gordon and Emily. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to go straight to Farmer McCall's field. Hurry, please. No time to waste. Next, Henry steamed to Tidmouth Sheds. Thomas, Percy, and Edward were there. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to go straight to Farmer McCall's field. Hurry, please. No time to rest. Henry puffed into Knapford Station. His cheeks were as red as James's paintwork. James was talking to the station master. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to go straight to Farmer McCall's field. Hurry, please, James. No time to talk. At last, Henry found Toby at the water tower. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to go straight to Farmer McCall's field. Hurry, please, Toby. No time to take on water. And Henry wished away. He felt a very happy engine. Henry arrived back at Farmer McCall's field, just in time for tea time. All the other engines were there, but Sir Topham Hatt wasn't. Henry felt silly. Again. I'm sorry, everyone. I thought Sir Topham Hatt was going to be here. Perhaps I was wrong. Suddenly, the Christmas trees were a forest of twinkling lights. Red, blue, green, yellow, sparkling in the darkness. The engines gasped in surprise. Fizzling fireboxes. This is wonderful. Then, there was the greatest surprise of all. Sir Topham Hatt stepped through the trees. He looked just like Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho. Happy winter holidays to all my really useful engines. Henry's eyes popped as wide as his wheels. This had been the best winter holiday special of all.